I think most scientists know that science doesn't tell us everything. I mean, it's going to be like more the atheist apologists or the, I mean, that are trying to say something different. But I mean, especially if you've ever done any scientific work, I mean, it's hard. And it's very narrow sorts of questions you can go after. And there's a lot of great questions. Probably the, probably the most interesting questions you usually can't actually get very much traction on scientifically because they're hard. And so the idea that there's important questions out there that are beyond science, it should be just, it should just be blatantly obvious, especially if you're a scientist. Would you agree with that? Um, yes. I, I, the only pushback I might give is I think that science can inform a lot of uh, issues that that aren't firmly in the realm of science, but that science has something to say about them. Well, sure, yeah. So, like, for example, end-of-life issues. That, that's, that's a moral question. That's a, an ethical question. It's a very personal question. It's a question that's on my mind a lot lately. Um, and I, but I do think that, this, that science and what we can measure about a person's brain, about a person's consciousness, about a person's awareness, about a person's um, entire experience, um, there... I don't know that you can get that any other way than scientific techniques. It doesn't tell you what to do, but it gives you information. And I think that's science at its best, is it just gives us information. And then we, as an evolved ape, <laughs> decide what to do with that information. And that's the fun part anyway, especially because once we get past all this fighting about evolution and creation and all this, we have such similar values. We want a lot of the same things. We, we want you know, a safe home, right? We want an earth that's gonna be sustainable. You know, we want, to, we want to be able to live without being uh, bothered and killed. And we want so many of the same things that when we stop fighting each other over things that really, in the end, don't matter to any of that, right? Because actually, my, my next-door neighbor could not believe in evolution. And I could be talking about my work all the time, and he just keeps himself censored. And it doesn't matter. He's still my friend. He's still my neighbor. Like, I don't care if he believes it or not. But I do care about what he thinks... Um, you know, about the, the school board election coming up. You know what I mean? Like, we have much bigger issues, I think. Um, and so, um, but I do think that science has a place at the table, and I think that people's values have a place at the table, you know, when it comes to politics and all those kinds of things. Um, so why, would, why do we disagree on things that we really just don't need to? We just, I just find it to be so unnecessary and so unhelpful. Yeah, to get to your question about scripture, though, um, you were saying, so there are Christians that think that you know, you should just take Genesis as a mythological account, unless Genesis, early Genesis, Genesis 1 through 11. There, there are faithful Christians. I know some of them. I mean, I, I think that just a lot of Christians um, have had a hard time with that view. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, it depends how you kind of draw the circles of what counts as Christian or not, but there, there's just large parts of the church that, that when they read Genesis, um, you know, before God, they have a very hard time seeing that as at least a faithful reading for themselves. And um, I, I, I think that matters. I mean, it just means that, you know, we don't want to present science in a way that creates a false sense of conflict. I mean, if there really is conflict, right. I, think, I think we need to be truthful about that. But if there isn't, I think we need to be very truthful about that too. And we need to have the same sort of honesty and rigor in how we engage these theological questions about Adam and Eve that we do in the science papers that you submit in, in your groups. And I think that's one place where um, that, you know, the scientific community could do better instead of you know, mocking those sorts of theological questions. I think there's an opportunity for, ta for taking it seriously. And I think what we'll find and what we are finding, one of the things that Nathan's done, I gotta give him credit for, he's come to several of these theological conferences with me. <laughs> um, he's done a couple at WashU, kind of workshopping my book. He's done some stuff with uh, Reasons to Believe and with Bill Craig, it's been kind of fun. He ends up being often either the only or one of the few atheists in the room. <laughs> um, oh, wait a minute, that's kind of an offensive term. Secular humanists in the room. <laughs> um, uh, and, and I think what we find out is that we're often really caught up in the same grand question of what it means to be human. And, and there's, a, there's a value, I think, even to a scientist that doesn't believe that Genesis is true in that same sense that I do, to connect like this inquiry, inquiries we have into how humans arise into this longer, older discourse about the image of God, uh, the human state and nature. And I think there's, there's these common threads that, that that's why these things are so compelling. That's part of the reason why Genesis matters so much. It's because, um, you know, where we come from does tell us something about who we are. It doesn't tell us everything. 
Um, and, but it does tell us something. You know, I, uh, it, you know, I, that, I think even kind of wondering about that is part of the distinct things of the human experience, right?